Now you're working. Sweet, sweet, sweet meats. Uh, 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 butts. I'm just checking the microphone. Yeah. But, 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 butts. Speaky, 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 speaky. Hole. Bomb, 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 hole. <laughs> Well, I think what we should do really, mate, is we should, yes, we should do our maker film, our maker review film, yeah. but we should also do a pie grading. A pie grading? You know, in terms of like what we expect from the pie, the look of the, the crust of the pie, the egg wash, the level of bake. Oh, well, they look good. Well, I always like to think the first bite is with the eye. So to me, I'm saying that's a good bake. Smells there's good. A, there's a nice egg wash on it. Mmm. Mmm, please. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us for our maker review. We've got a few more makers to kind of throw at you and see what you guys think. Uh, we love your feedback and we also love you guys kind of pointing us in the direction of kind of people that we might want to check out ourselves. So thanks. Keep that up. Um, hopefully there's some up for everyone here. We're, we, we had a bit of a discussion actually and we were like, we kind of feel that we don't want to bring you like people... Ah, Maybe we're setting ourselves too tight a margin here, but we're, we're trying to bring you niche stuff. We're trying to bring, bring you things that we've discovered, not stuff that's already kind of like well and truly taken off, or dare I say it, maybe even got slightly jaded because it's got so popular, if you like, or, oh gosh, mm, taste it on the burp. <laughs> um, it won't necessarily be, I suppose we're calling it makers though, so it's probably got to be makers. Makers entails a lots of things though, and we'll see that that we've got a wide array of choices today. Yeah, yeah. Everything from leather work, blacksmithing, construction. Yeah, yeah. And uh, well, who's I mean, first? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I almost want to save up because who is it? Steady crafting, <laughs> the craftsman. Hello and welcome to the Craftman Show. My name is your host, the Craftman. Honestly, man. He cracks me up. I think he must have a background in TV or something. Do you, you reckon think? that? Well, he's got his own little studio. He's got his recording booth. I mean, he does it all himself, and it's it's not lo-fi at all. Must be an incredibly clever man, um, if indeed he is a man. But I think he is a man. But you've never we've never seen him. We've seen his gloved hands. But um, oh, the stuff that he covers is just brilliant. But also the way he manages to interweave that just comic genius. His hand puppet. You, you're, I'm, as, I'm in much. I'm, I'm in as much love with the hand puppet as I am him, in a manner of speaking. But it's just gold. Try to do experiment that I want to share. See how we can keep from heaven bubbles everywhere. So I thought and asked myself what I need to use to illustrate this bubble problem. Serious, what I choose. Favorite is King Fighter Mix with the free mix. They had quiz selling it cause I already it. So what does he do? What's his main bag? What what's his uh well, modus operandi? <clears throat> this is cut this bit out. Fundamentally, what is the channel? Right. He makes action figurines. He does his own casting, he does his own storylines, he takes existing Star Wars figures and then reconfigures them, adds elements to them. In the end, just, you know. And then there you go. That's when Greedo did some night classes, went back to school and learned some things, changed his whole lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? He also makes his own figurines and he's, I mean, some of those, those are the really clever stuff. In today's video, I'm gonna talk to y'all about sculpting, making a, a figure from scratch. Y'all have seen some of my previously toy things that I have made, and some of y'all have asked, how did you make those? So I thought I would show y'all how I sculpt the figure from scratch. And I mean, it's also, I find so relaxing about watching it is that Southern, Southern American drawl. Louisiana. Louisiana, <laughs> Mississippi. Yeah. The forests of Allegheny and kind of coming down the Mississippi and Tennessee and all of that. Southern American drawl and just absolutely it's just excellent stuff. Yeah, the series that I liked was the one where he made the little model out of uh, the chicken that's based on the chicken that lives in his farm. So oh, right, he created yeah. a cartoon character chicken where you see him developing his uh, character idea, which takes quite a long time, but it's quite interesting, his process for doing that. 
And then it's like how you build the prototype model to then create the cast. Mm -hmm. And then he takes you through how he decorates it and paints it. And he's using just odds and sods as well from around his shop, isn't he? To yeah. create little pieces like the chicken's got a spacesuit on. So he, they develop like a little pack on his back. Yeah, like, yeah some tubes. oxygen. Yeah. I think, I, think, I think you just said the word prototyping, isn't it? Yeah. So it's like, you know, if you were, if you had an interesting kind of like, creating a prototype of something you were possibly thinking about going on to kind of like, um, I suppose, market, um, you know, you could do a lot worse than literally watching everything that he does because it's excellent for a start, but also he's a very clever man. Yeah, very it's clever man. high on the tutelage and education and the really processes, high. and he hands you out all the details that you need in order to get the equipment that he uses, and uh, he's really quite detailed, but it's also... Hugely entertaining, like that. Hugely entertaining. That film that he's made, the He Man song, the He Man one that he's oh, made for please. his new Facebook group oh, thing. Mate, that's just—it's just brilliant. What's this place called? Craft the universe. Craft the universe. And it's, there is that underlying sense of humour throughout the whole thing, and self-deprecating humour as well. You know, he's the yeah. first to, he's the first to kind of call himself. Isn't I would he? say, out of all the time that I've spent on YouTube, he's in my top five of all time. I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I could probably say he's probably in my top three, maybe, but don't. Push don't, me don't quote me on it. Yeah, well, don't quote <laughs> me on that in case I need to move. No, I would say he's, he's probably. I look forward to his his films when they pop up. Please subscribe. Just watch one of his films. And the first time you watch it, you'll be like, what the hell? And trust me, you'll be hooked from, from 30 seconds in, you'll be hooked. I've got to ask you, mm -hmm. what would you take from him and apply to the Dirty Shed in the future? Oh, okay. Well, I mean, so really, what, uh, what, in, what, yeah. So I would like to do a little bit more casting. Probably, you know, start with something really easy like brass. I say really easy. I'm sure it's not. So he's he does more silicon based stuff and plastic based casting, but he also does prototyping. Say it again. Um, but he also does kind of techniques for how to take something I've created this big and then kind of blow it up, which that, that's spellbinding stuff for me. I'm like, what? I would never have thought of those kind of processes. So we have our original object. Then we got the uh, Le Marathon and made a copy with a regular mold. Then we did us a shrink mold right there. And then this one is the one that we soaked up in mineral spirits right there. He'll feed into, or his channel will help us when we actually get to a point where we're gonna do some lost wax kind of casting. And um, yeah, there's a few others out there as well, but I mean, he for me is the absolute best at it. To be honest, I don't think it's gonna to be too long before he's got a TV, he's got his own TV show. Yeah. And he, I don't he, think he'd have to, to be honest, I don't think he'd have to alter a damn thing replicating his process for designing a character, creating a little model, creating a cast and then duplicating it and uh, mm -hmm. painting it up and creating some merch almost, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you nod, mm -hmm. Tubby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are we going to have a snack break? That was bound to happen. Good As time. with all the people that we're talking about today, we'll include links below. There'll be little jobbies up in the corner, whichever corner it is. Oh, I can't tell left from right, really. But yeah, Click on the links and check them out. And um, yeah, drop us a line and let us know whether you like them, what you like about them, any people that you might have uh, stumbled across that you think we should know about, and we'll cover them in later films because yeah. that's what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. We like the underdog, don't we? We do. Not that I'm saying Steady Crafting is the underdog, but we're trying to bring you stuff that's just a little bit more... Low, a little bit under the radar, maybe. And, you know, don't get us wrong, we will cover other stuff as well. I mean, we had a big discussion about one person that we were going to include today, but they've just gone ballistic and it just feels like a little bit like... Bandwagon. It, it's lazy, it's lazy kind of maker film because everyone will everyone will probably already know anyway and be, oh, yeah, well, I already follow him. I'm not going to tell you who it is, but Grandpa Ramu. Everyone's path on YouTube is completely individual and we, we like things, we don't like things, but we're just trying to throw a few things out there that you might find kind of, you know, useful. Right, so, okay, next one up. Oh. Again, try and give an introduction before we say the name. Go. This guy does great projects. I love the music. 
and I love the sense of humour. And thankfully, we we're very lucky to count him as one of our... Um, Schedulencia. The Schedulencia, if not one of the founding members of the Schedulencia. Phil makes things! Yay. Number one, introduction. All right. Number two, workspace. There it is. Number three, recent projects. This drill press stand. Number four, proudest piece. This coffee table. I think he hides little things in his films that you've got to have a really keen eye to spot. For example, there's one film he makes where he's, I think he might be a teacher. I've kind of had this discussion with him actually in his comments and I think he's a teacher. So I think he either works in a college or a school. Number 12, when you're not making. I sit at a desk pressing buttons in one of these for some of them. He also taught himself how to use one of those laser engravers or laser, um, I'd, I'd like a wood burning machine for want of a better expression. And he's pulled out a Beetlejuice. You know when, um, what's her face? And who is it? Who who are in Beetlejuice? The Gina two? Davis. And what's Alec it? Baldwin. Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin. <laughs> I've got Alec Baldwin. Dear God. Um, so it's Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin. And they kind of pull their faces and into those weird shapes. And he's then taken those, laser engraved them. And those are on his toilet door. Here we are in a thoroughly modern apartment. It's everything a young couple could want. Bedroom, compact bathroom. And the only reason that I spotted it was because the very day before I watched that film, I saw Beetlejuice and I was like, oh, I just noticed. And he only flashes across it. But the coffee table, that's a great project. And you know, his process is, um, I mean, I think he's a far better woodworker than I am, if I'm honest. I mean, I'm a bit butchery, but he's, he's you know, carpentry cabinet making kind of quality. Smaller channel granted, but just great delivery, great music, great content. Give him a watch. Yeah. I watched um, <clears throat> him make a backgammon set that was based on a quote from a book that he liked. Moonfleet, a reoccurring location in the book is the pub in the village of Moonfleet called the Why Not? And in that pub, there's usually a game of backgammon being played. In the book, there's a very accurate description of the board being used, which includes the inscription, as in life, so in a game of hazard, skill will make something of the worst of throws. He's bringing in some storytelling, making a great product at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. I think processes. If, I had to, if I had to kind of... He's, he's got a very similar sense of humour to us. Well, yeah, and, you know, it. I, I, when I'm watching it, sometimes I get like, oh, I get Vic and Bob. Hello, you. Yes, you. <laughs> you know, just classic Vic and Bob. So I'm, I just watch it for those little elements that he pulls in. But just a great maker as well. Again, it's one of these guys that is doing it all on his Todd. So yeah, on doing his the own. making, but also making all the films and having to actually <laughs> do the craft and then do the craft of making the films. It's admirable. And yeah, keep it up, Phil. Yeah, keep it up. Thumbs Cheers, up mate. From Dirty Shed. Yeah. Well, that's a nice straight line, isn't it? Well, do you want to do Andrew's project? Because you're really introducing this to me as well, because <coughs> as yet you've kept me... Not in the dark, you've told well, us what's well, going well, on, well, but I presume well, you're We've launched. got to build it up. Oh, OK. We've got to build it up. Perhaps the greatest YouTube channel? Well, no, surely that's us. No, it's my channel. What? And why am I You've promoting... got a channel. I have got That's a channel. why he's not focusing enough on this <laughs> shit. Because <laughs> yeah, I have to earn some beans. Yeah, um, no, don't we all? Yeah. So basically, I'm promoting my channel now, which is... Which a is collection. cheeky. Well, it is. Oh, I a thought bit. You, sorry, I thought you were apologising. Well, I will apologise <laughs> later, but I'm promoting my channel because I'm working on a project that will eventually include the Dirty Shed. But at the moment, it is a construction project based just outside of Harrogate, which is using construction techniques that aren't widely used. So it's building enormous houses, like eight, nine houses out of SIPs panels. So SIPs are structurally insulated panels. So they're OSB board with insulation in between it that are manufactured off-site, delivered to site and whacked up in no time at all. It's a very unusual site. Uh, we purchased it with outline planning for nine houses, two conversions and seven new build. The interesting thing of it is that it had a vacant building credit, which meant that we could tear down these old 
modern agricultural structures, and in their place, we could build seven brand new buildings. And we're very fortunate with the planning that we um, were able to design very modern structures in addition to the two barn conversions on the site. The films that we've made already have got quite a lot of traction because a lot of people are looking at new eco ways of building. Mm -hmm. And it's just an interesting project. And Andrew's really, really knowledgeable and he's got good insight into construction and building techniques. And he's, he's really good in front of camera as well. Something to keep in mind with this process when you're using SIPS panels is that typically the design process is much more complex. Not only do you need your own architect and engineer, but then you'll be introducing to the project the SIPS technician and their engineer. Once it's designed by our architect, we uh, would then go and find a contractor to use, and then it would be 3D modeled and further designed by their own in-house designer. So very quickly, we knew that we had to make sure and select the right contractor to part with, partner with. Ruined it right at the end. Son of a bitch. If you wanna check out what I do in my spare time, like, cause there's other work on my channel as well, quite a lot of which Al has been involved with. But if you wanna keep up with this church farm SIPS project, it's gonna be interesting because later on down the line, some of the interior design elements, we Dirty Shed have been asked to get involved with that. So that will be cool, something, yeah. Yeah, yeah there'll be lots of little elements that we might be pulled in on. So you'll be seeing parts of the project anyway on this channel in the future. So yeah, as, as with all of our makers, the links are below, check it out. Cool, well I'll be the first to, yeah, I've, I'm looking forward to checking that out. I know, um, it's something I've kept asking you, and I know you, you've been waiting for the time to be right. But, you know, when you see how staid we are and how laborious we make construction work, you know, block work, insulating, plastering, you know, it's like there are other ways of doing this stuff, guys, you know, without still doing things the way they were done a thousand years ago or whatever it might be. And I do think that a lot of his, a lot of this content is really quite innovative stuff. I, I, I've worked in construction in the past. I'll be honest, I don't, don't do it anymore. Um, I fell out of love with it. You know, you get bored, it, you know, that, that process of taking a place, stripping it back, and then slapping all exactly the same stuff on, but because it's so it's new. You know, it, there's so many different ways of doing it and just being bogged down in the way we do things in this country. I think, we, you know, it is the future. Well, that, that's like a major part of bread. it. Andrew's approach to building this project is very different from anyone else that you come across. This site is freaking huge. You could have put 40 houses on this site and they've only got like nine. Mm -hmm. Two of them are barn uh, renovations, but the other seven are brand new foundations up, new builds of this new way of making things that is all about creating a house that you want to live in. And it's more than... Andrew is in charge of the money and all that, and he is a business, but he cares more about creating something that people love. I was really impressed with like just how big it is. It's massive, isn't it? They're big houses, yeah. You know, you look at something on a plan and you can show people plans, but they don't really, it's very difficult to feel volume. Um, you know, when you're selling houses, People are like, oh, I want at least 3,000 square feet. Well, you don't know what 3,000 square feet really is. You don't know what that really feels like. It depends on how it's laid out. You know, it, it depends on, to a certain degree, it might be ceiling height or windows, or there's a lot of other factors. Um, so it, that's kind of a starting point for people, but it's really when you get walk through the house and you walk in and you feel these spaces, that's what they're buying, really. They're not buying 4,500 square feet. They're buying a house that feels like this. And when you when I take people around, that's what's exciting to me is they're like, oh my God, you know, this is this is amazing. Look at the views and look at the size of this room and the volume of the, you know, the vaulted ceilings and whatever. We're not about how many of these, you know, four bedroom cracker boxes can we sell. We're about creating something that people just really fall in love with. And this is like their forever house. And that's our passion really is to try and build something that people love. It's an important purchase. You know, for most people, it's the most important purchase. And it affects how you live and how you feel about yourself in the world and life. 
you know, you spend a lot of time in your house. So um, I think it's important to try and live in a place that's beautiful and um, that's ergonomical, that works for you, that's a place that you just can't wait to get back to. You know, you've said it yourself, knowledge is cheap now. You know, if you're really interested, you can go out there and find out how something is done. And I think this is what great, what is great about, um, you know, this project with Andrew is that it is, for us, probably more so in England than uh, for us in the UK than America is, this is new stuff. Yeah. You know, we haven't got the resources to continually, you know, make bricks. You know, bricks are always going to be available, but, you know, they're getting more and more expensive. And then when you want to start working with stone, well, you know, this is all, a lot of these quarries are now quarried out, you know, and, and you know, we, we've, we do, you know, we do have to fucking change. We weren't at the pinnacle of building 100 years ago. So why do we keep repeating it? Yeah. Why do we keep chewing it in resources? Why do we have massive factories that make cement? I know... It, it's, you know. it, people hate change. Yeah. But literally, the modern world is you have to embrace change. Shit's changing all the time, but people are fighting against it. It's like if yeah. you were to jump 100 years into the future, you'd expect things to look different. But it doesn't happen like that. It takes gradual things, and you just have to be open to the idea that there are different ways to do everything. Companies are looking at innovative ways that they can do more off-site. The problems with construction are everything on-site. <laughs> it's very rarely is it something, you know, you don't have a problem with something that is manufactured somewhere. It's it's putting that together on site and weather is the biggest problem. So what we have here, oh round two, is a just a sausage roll chaser really. Let's have a little look. Let's have a look at it. Let's let's check out its features. <laughs> Fat sausage in there. Said the vicar. <laughs> oh god, it is a bloody monster sausage. Did you get an end? No. No, I didn't either. So it's like, oh, it's just pure sausage. Well, first bite is with the eye. Second bite is with the mouth. I think the pasty look better. So at this juncture, mm -hmm. we've got to go back to the giveaway that we were doing before lockdown. Oh yeah, we want to cover that, don't we? Of course, well, just give us a minute. Okay, there we go. Little hook, something of nothing. Something out of nothing. It's got some character, that, hasn't it? Nice little wall hook. Yeah. Maybe for your your workshop, you've got a little hook to hang something hang on. Hang a brush on. Yeah, so there we go. We'll do that as a giveaway. There we go. That's what we made. And we said we'd give it away, and it all happened before lockdown, quite a bit before lockdown, actually. Now you've got sausage roll flakes on it. Oh, we better sit down. <clears throat> right. So we've got all the people that commented on the film, that was the rule. You comment on the film and you're in the draw to win. Hook. <laughs> it's such a pointless thing, isn't it? Yeah, really, I don't know why we even bother, but we're gonna include a uh, key, key ring with that as well, so as we mentioned. Ah, oh, that was because we didn't mark this, we didn't stamp this, did we? Oh. This new world, Phil Cook. Turgleworks. John Bottomley. Ben Burtle, will recognise the name, thanks Ben. Eric Zander, one Eric of Zander. the purchasers of one of our set of uh, Skull Coasters. Oh really? Nick ah. Flitwick. Bucky 415. Rory Hope. Simon Croatia, you're in there. Gar Harrison. Shane Fitzhenry. John Albrecht, he's oh. been a bit quiet recently. Landy. Mountain Goldfish. Ah, Peter Valkananis. Danny Moss. Uh, sorry, this one, uh, Bert O'Keefe. Daniel G.J. Wallace. Chris, Chris Lauden. Ivan Walker. Phil Makes Things. Darren oh, yeah. Hill. Jim Speed 13. Justin Wilson Customs, who's Justin a very Wilson. regular commenter. Yeah, and, Justin and Wilson Customs. of the channel. Adora, are you Adora. saying? Adora. This seems too much. Dan Dorsey. Rick Makes. Cabbage. Norman L. Feisty Armadillo. Jamie Mullen. That's Those us. are the commentators. Commenters? Oh, man. Commenters. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, we should probably do something a bit stupid, so I don't know whether... Well, you're the chief executive of stupid. So okay, well, let's give them a mix. Let's give them a dirty shed mix-up. So, Uncle Al is going to pick out okay, first, not the looking. second and the third, as not we said looking. previously. Oh, that's got a week mine. to I get in touch. It. Okay, well, that's number one. Okay, so we're going to do a massive Yeah, let's do it. Uh, oh! Oh, Dan Dorsey. Dan Dorsey is the uh, winner of the hook. Dan Dorsey. Dan Dorsey there. Yeah. So get us your address, Dan. Yeah. Get us your address and we'll get that to you. And just in case a backup one. 
Okay, who is this? It's another one of mine because I, I folded them all neatly. Ah! Oh, 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 oh. oh, I'd be disappointed though. If I was second, I'd be disappointed. Yeah, uh, maybe we won't show it. Okay. We, we haven't shown you the second place, but we did draw it. Um, just because we don't want you to feel too downhearted that you didn't win. But anyway, anyway, I'm just going to have another bite of sausage roll. You do that. Thanks for sticking with us. <laughs> People are going to go, oh, I'm just watching you guys eat pies made me feel sick. <laughs> <laughs> you set of animals. Mm. Well, we like to bring you something a little bit different and, and make you realise how actually professional we are, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And how rubbish it is when they, they show in a film someone eating dinner and having a conversation. It's just bullshit. <laughs> so, yeah, should we do uh, next maker? Who's your next maker on your list there, Alistair? Mm. Well, Foxes and Ravens? Foxes and Ravens. Fo Nora at Foxes and Ravens. We've been in touch with Nora, actually, haven't we? Yeah. And we're, we're hoping to do some sort of collaboration kind of in the future. Um, we don't know what that's going to look like at this point because we never do. Um, but, yeah. What's her skill set? Well, it, it, it's, what do they call it? LARPing. Is it LARPing? It's LARPing, isn't it? Live action role play. She is predominantly a leather worker. And I think the story goes that her, her partner or her boyfriend or um, husband was a leather worker. And then Nora started kind of picking up on that. And now, I don't know whether he still does the leather working, I'm, I, he probably does, um, but Nora's kind of taken it off and set up a YouTube channel. She makes, I suppose they're historically correct recreations of, to me it seems predominantly like Viking era. Yeah. Um, leather work. So she makes a, a kit for making shoes, um, purses, um, belts, belts uh, gorgets. Ooh. Are they gorgets? And then you know archery kind of um, archery kind of components. I don't know what any of these things are called. Um, what got me in, or what I first noticed, is um, I can't remember what search I was doing on YouTube, and she had a film up that was basically drawing a pencil drawing of how she how she creates her designs and she did a celtic knot step one draw uh, some swirls at this stage you don't really have to be perfect with your drawing uh it's okay if it's kind of wobbly and not really refined because we're going to be erasing and redoing these parts a lot but you want the general shapes to be as even as you can and to me it, it, it was during lockdown that i watched this and i just found the whole thing so satisfying tranquil and, and tranquil yeah exactly that word it was so calming to watch and a very organic process you know she made loads of mistakes and then would go back and correct them and i and by the end you're like Oh my God, you know, I love all that interwoven Celtic design. And you sometimes it's difficult to have an eye to see what those images are. You know, I'm thinking here of the um, that famous uh, stave church door with the dog, um, the dog and the dragon and serpents intertwined. And I'll, I'll get a copy of that to you so you can see. And the way she draws that knot and the interwoven nature of it and that organic, you know, it's well worth watching, really calming. You're watching a great artist at work, I think. And I think that's what that is. It is art. It's not just recreating leather clothing or whatever it might be. Check her out. It's brilliant. I mean, like, if we were to do a collaboration, top of your head... Well, we, we, had we, a quick, we had a quick short talk and I was like, I mean, obviously it's 3,000, well, however many mar thousand miles away. Is it 3,000 miles away? Is it something like that? Something like that, isn't it? Yeah, well, we thought that the, the thing to do is probably for us to make the first move and maybe have a chat with, have a chat and see if we could, or if I could forge something, we could probably do the make a film of making something, sending it to uh, Nora at Foxes and Ravens and seeing 
or if she had a specific need for a forged element that we could make and send to her to include in her leather work, because it'd be nice to kind of add to a project rather than us saying, oh, well, we want you to make a tool for a, a cover for a tool or something like that, which is, let's face it, I think, you know, uh, something like that anyway. She might say, well, you know, oh, some of your hooks, I could, I could do something with some of your hooks. I thought about like a, a belt, a Viking belt with maybe a few of those hooks on it for kind of holding your axe or your purse or something like that. So I don't know. She may, she may have a historically correct forged element that we might be able to recreate and post over there and uh, yeah, and just see what happens. But again, another little fledgling channel. Yeah. Um, she's doing so well. In fact, she's overtaken us now, hasn't she? Yeah. It's in such a short hard. period, it's not hard. It's we not hard we lose viewers when we, we put do. Every out. film we put up, we lose viewers. And you know what? About I don't 10. blame any of them. Yeah. <laughs> so, any uh, of our projects that we mentioned previously, like a, I don't know, the coffee table or mm. the the maritime chest or something like that, could there be elements that were leather that you could incorporate into your design that maybe we could talk about with uh, Nora? Well. I don't know whether the coffee table, the coffee table's a bit industrial. Okay. And it's not going to have that Viking twist to it. I mean, we, we you know, we're, we're going for industrial revolution. I mean, the problem is it would probably be something that's way below her pay, pay grade. grade in terms of, oh, we could have a leather sheath on a handle or a leather cover on a handle. I think that's something we'd have a go at. Yeah. I do tinker with leather work, but I'm not particularly good. Yeah. But... Um, you know, again, um, I'm sure there's something. There's absolutely something. So we've we'll, got a little pouch of yours that you made. Oh, really? Yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah. What is that? That's a doe skin, mate. That. And I keep my leather cleaning stuff in it. The camera cleaning, lens cleaning stuff. Oh, wow. Is that a badger skin brush? And there's Cheers. Al's old rune brand on there. Seen that? Oh, God. Yeah. I used to. Where is it? Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. There it is at the top. Yeah. But you see, I've so always. So leather's a thing that we could do as well. Yeah, but we're not. We're in no we're way. Nowhere. We're in no yeah. way as good as uh, foxes Nora. and ravens. No. Nor would we try to be. I'm getting a healthy glow on now after my ruby. You ruby do it. Yeah, and my sausage roll. I think <laughs> it was the roll, wasn't it? Yeah, it's quite a pate. It's a very rich sausage, that isn't it? It is. Mmm. Very rich and actually quite sweet. It is pate is a good way of describing it. Uh, the pies in this broadcast have been sponsored by Elite Meat of Starbeck. I'm gonna desperate. I'm gonna point them all over this film. <laughs> Guys, you owe us pies. You owe us pies. Pies to upon Kingdom pies. Come. Yeah. Let's do the last making. Hang on. We'll just wait for my neighbour to stop using some sort of stone saw. Mm. Have a sausage roll, Mark. Mm. Powerful grinding, my friend. What's he doing? I don't know. Oi, mate. <laughs> Give it a rest. This is dirty shed business. Mm. You're ruining it. It's the meat for the elite. Okay, um, we've got a bit of dessert here as well. Mm -hmm. It's not all meat and pies, it's cakes as well. We've got one more, we've got one more maker for you to round up this kind of like little, um, this little maker film. So working with Iron Nathan, bang, straight in there, say the name, fire it out. So guys, I thought I'd let you in on a little, a little thing here that I've got going on. I'm making a full size Galapagos tortoise. Well, not a full size, not a fully grown adult, but Big ass Galapagos tortoise out of metal. Again. I haven't seen this dude before, so he regale us all. Well, again, it's kind of like traditional blacksmithing. You, you're right in there with him. He does more than just film the anvil faces. He's making kind of components, but it's very well thought out. Great kind of coverage of process. I, I, I think he's maybe he's maybe a blacksmith's blacksmith, and I'm not calling myself a blacksmith when I say that. What I mean is. He doesn't necessarily kind of, in some films he does, but not in all, necessarily sit there and talk you through the process. But you just get a start to finish blacksmithing project. And you know, he makes this hand vise. And I, I saw one of these hand vices on eBay, funnily enough, and it wasn't one that he made, but it was one that he was emulating with his project. And oh my God, did I want that. But it was it was going for silly money, and I just thought, actually, I've got a load of hand vices up there. I didn't sate my tool habit by buying one, but yeah, great projects. At the moment, he's doing a a really large scale, and it's going to be really interesting to see how this turns out. So he's trying to create a blacksmith-made tortoise, 
and it, a Galapagos Island sauce, and I mean, it, it's going to be it's going to be massive. Very like us actually for this one, this this project in particular. You know, we we've been having a discussion and kind of a bit of a critique of how we do things, and you know. Um, some of the other makers out there, you know, they'll flash up kind of like CAD drawings of this is what it's going to be and this is how it's going to be. It, it, I can't do that. I'm very much more organic. I like to start with a project and have an end, a visualisation, which is generally in my head about where a project's going to end, and then work through all those problems to get to that point. Where yeah. You're not buying any plans of Al's builds. No, because there isn't a plan. There, there isn't. I mean, you, you know, you're living it with us when we're doing it. You know, it, it is that organic. You know, you, you've you've often seen where it almost seems like a film's going to come to an end because we've hit a problem and I need to go away and have three days to think about it. And it's really funny sometimes when you're, if you you are following plans, it, it, in a way, it removes that element of it. I mean, it doesn't in in its entirety because no plan. No plan that anyone follows is truly ever achieved 100% of the time. There's always a problem that hadn't been considered or all of these things. So there is that engineering, ingenuity element to it. But with this last project to Nathan's, I think it really strikes a chord with, um, with the Dirty Shed because it, 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 there is going to be that element with this project. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that. And when the shell's on top, it's going to give it the rigidity. Rigidity? So that will give it the support. So it doesn't really need the big bar at the bottom. Plus, as you can see, I've changed, changed the curvature of this. So it's a lot less steep. So all this bar will be coming out. So with the blacksmiths that we've talked about previously, Joshua Delisle and such, Dan Moss, it, yeah, it, it all sort Delisle of well. moves towards sculpture. Is that like a progression of blacksmithing as you become more well, adept at it? You then move that way? You know, yeah, I, I love that sculpture. I, you know, if you asked me 20 years ago what I truly, truly wanted to be, I wanted to be a sculptor. And it was as a kid, I used to, you know, go around the Yorkshire Sculpture Park and Henry Moore and, you know, and then, you know, I, the, the architectural stuff like the Mayan cultures, the Hader cultures of kind of uh, the northwest coast of Canada and all of those monumental. And then you start seeing these similarities between all of those kind of caricature based and it, it, it does caricature based kind of art forms where they're depicting creatures, but not in a true life fashion, not like a renaissance painter would try and capture something in its absolute form whereas there was this there was this um gray area where it was more caricature-y and I think yeah that's possibly I don't know whether I've just completely lost my train of thought or, or the point I was trying to make but I think blacksmiths eventually you get to a point where you bend a piece of steel in such a manner that it, it, it's no longer what it is which is a hard piece of steel with that doesn't you know move it's like an organic tentacle and then you kind of take that and you're like, oh, wow, I've just bent that. And it now it doesn't look like steel anymore. It is. It's it's hard like steel. But when I was working it, it was soft. It was malleable. It was it wasn't it wasn't like steel. Now it is steel and it's hardened off and it's got this soft, gentle curvature and feel to it. Organic feel like a like a soft octopus's tentacle. But it's it's rock hard steel. How's that done? I can't. I can't bend that with my hands. Of course you wouldn't, but you know, maybe you know what I'm trying to say. Or have I just completely lost you there? <laughs> you did, that, was a, that was a classic ramble. Well, classic I, Al ramble. I think that's what I was trying to say there. Wind him up, a, stick a sausage roll in him. And off blah, I go. Blah, 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 it's blah, that blah. bloody pate sausage, <laughs> isn't it? I'm going to have a bite of this to calm down. But yeah, I think once you've seen that and once you've done that to a piece of steel and you've seen that and you've taken a step back, I think, yeah, suddenly your, your imagination just goes, <laughs> explodes with ideas. And yeah, and so it's it is a natural progression. Not everyone would follow that route. Some people would be happy being a fabricator making gates all day long, but other people, you know, it's it's a gratifying. It, 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 you're working with your imagination as much as you're working with your hands. Fantastic. Yeah, I've been in touch with him actually. Yeah. Yeah. He got back to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just said thanks for the comment or something. Cool. So that's something to build on. <laughs> Maybe I could comment on all your stuff. <laughs> no, fuck off. <laughs> Should we uh, round that off then? 
There's yeah. quite a lot of jibber jabber about makers. Yeah, just I think um, there's some good recommendation recommendations in there. Yeah, some uh, guys who are on the up, some guys who are just starting out. But uh, it's a good cross section of different skills and talents. And uh, yeah, all the links will be below uh, to check out the channels and please subscribe to them. Give them a bit of support. That's how we get by. Um, yeah, little explosions of optimism. Oh, God, are you exploding optimism into this? When you get a sub, it's, oh, yeah, yeah. We and got then you lose sub. 10 when you put a film up. It's oh, just like, oh, people hate us. <laughs> There's no wonder no one wants to collaborate with our anuses. <laughs> oh, God, don't put that in. Um, <gasps> so you're going to say goodbye before you munch into that? Oh, well, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye. 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 I think when you've chopped all your bits into it. Yeah. Mm, in a way, we can rely on our makers and you using their footage to make a better film. <laughs> so we don't have to rely on any of our own skills. Yeah, no, not at all. Oh, yeah. Let's try and vampire off other oh, no. people's skills. We've given away the secrets. Yeah. The secrets of losing subscribers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly.